Today I have the distinct pleasure of interviewing Peter Clausley from Searchlight Minerals. How are you today? Very well. Nice to be here. So let's get all of the investors out there that made a huge amount of money off of cannabis redirected to some great uptick potential. And let's start with battery metals and gold in Saskatchewan. Fantastic. I'm a recent addition to the board. I'm an independent director, member of the audit committee, helping Searchlight uh, with its assets, with its capital program market. I didn't know that much about Saskatchewan until I joined the company. But my good friend Randy Hoback, who's an MP from Saskatchewan, has been giving me a lot of information. And there's a lot more than just uranium and potash in Saskatchewan. There's gold, there's silver, there's cobalt, there's vanadium, the hot metal of the moment. And it, is, it just got ranked the third best mining jurisdiction in the world by the Fraser Institute behind Western Australia and Nevada. So there are a lot of good reasons to be mining in Saskatchewan. Well, my family is actually first generation Canadians and they're both, my parents are both from Saskatchewan. So I know a lot about Saskatchewan and I love that we're finally drawing some attention to this province. So tell us a little bit more about Searchlight Minerals. Give us kind of a, a 10 story view of what Searchlight Minerals is. Searchlight Minerals is run by a wonderful man named Stephen Wallace. He's a great geologist, he's cautious, he's patient with his data. I really enjoy working with him. Searchlight has less than 25 million shares issued and outstanding. There are warrants and options, but they aren't in the money. Uh, it's a very strong capital structure poised for success. Okay, so in addition to a tight structure and the new resource that they're just putting, they're redirecting because they had other projects previously. It, yes, the, uh, projects down in uh, Nevada. But Stephen has recently bought the English Bay Gold Project with some staggeringly strong numbers. And he bought a property that had been drilled in 2012 up in North Saskatchewan called Dudridge. Uh, it was drilled by one of the incarnations of fission. They found uranium, but not enough to justify it economically. The property was let go, Stevens Group restaked it, and um, they have discovered through uh, reviewing the old assays, cobalt, vanadium, and uranium in the boulder fields in North Saskatchewan. Okay, so you're an expert in this industry. You spend a lot of time in critical materials, battery metals, battery materials, yep. sustainability issues. What would you say is going to be the hottest, uh, hottest of those three in 2019? I personally am going to pick vanadium. Vanadium had its run, though, in, in 2018. The, the price increased dramatically. Cobalt went the other way due to, I think, China manipulation of the market internationally. China went from, uh, China, cobalt went from $94,000 a ton, currently trading around $34,000 a ton on the London Metal Exchange. I think you're gonna see that inflect this year as we get into a shortage. Mines in uh, the Congo have pulled off Congo production. Um, there was one mine that had to close down part of its production because its cobalt's contaminated with uranium. I know that at a producing mine in Mexico, they're not producing as much cobalt as they thought they would out of the copper that they're mainly producing. So you're going to see a decline in supply and basic economics says if you're declining the supply, price has to rise. I'm calling cobalt over vanadium. Okay, so and then where's uranium in those top three? Uranium is such an odd metal. You know, if, if energy fuels is correct in its application to the US government, you will see a spot market for uranium develop in the United States different from the international spot market. So a lot of what happens with uranium is government driven and almost impossible to predict. I personally am a huge supporter of uranium. I just don't know how the prices can't go up with the uh, shortage that we have globally. I agree, I agree, but I, I don't have as much of a feel for uranium. So what about gold? Gold in Saskatchewan, I love it. Everybody loves gold. The nice thing about gold is if you produce it, you can basically put it on the curb and somebody will come pick it up. It's not like trying to do a rare earths deal where you need to have a downstream and an upstream before you can get your deal going. Uh, there's a healthy industry in Saskatchewan. Every year in November, there's a, a very active mining meeting held in Saskatoon, about 700 people attend, and we intend to be there this year. I have to learn more about gold in Saskatchewan, but I do know there's a healthy industry, healthy infrastructure, and there is a lot of gold, especially up in the North End. And of course, Saskatchewan investors tend to be very loyal, so I'm certain they're gonna be looking at searchlights. So what should we anticipate, say, in the next quarter or two as shareholders? We're probably going to remediate part of the portfolio and give it a real message that can be told. Do we want to reopen the old mine that's on our property? Do we want to put feedstock into, into Hud Bay's mine? Do we want to concentrate on the vanadium, cobalt, uranium property? And we will follow our CEO's lead on that as we make the determination of how to best drive value for the company. So 
it will be boardroom thinking for the next little bit, then execution in the field. Well, Peter, as always, it's a pleasure. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for being here.